Hello guys, welcome again to this complete tutorial in AutoCAD. This is the part 9, and in this video I will talk about the icons of the status bar, which are these icons that appear on the bottom right corner. As some people don't understand exactly what they do, I'm going to make a briefly explanation of most of them. Grid mode and snap mode. These features allow me to draw objects with reference points and, in my opinion, they are useful just if both are switched on by itself. Grid mode is this icon. I'm going to click on it and you can see that it shows a grid on the screen and it is composed by major lines and minor lines. If I click in this arrow here now I click in Snap Settings. I can configure here in grid spacing the distance between two minor lines. So basically from here to there. In this case the grid X spacing is 10 and the grid Y spacing also 10. Here it says major line every five minor lines. So you can see here I have a major line, now one, two, three, four, five minor lines. The snap mode. If I activate any drawing command, for example line, you can see how the pointer moves normally on the screen. I will click in the snap mode icon, this one, and Look how I move just in points with specific distances. Basically in the intersections of the grid lines. Again, in snap settings, here, I can edit the snap spacing. As my grid spacing and snap spacing have the same values, the pointer snaps in all the intersections of the grid, as you saw before. If I would change the snap spacing for 20 and click in OK, now the snap spacing is the double and the pointer only moves between two intersections. And this is why grid mode and snap mode should have the same spacement. Now, I will show you how grid and snap mode can be useful for drawing detailing or geometric objects. I will draw this rectangle here. I type REC, press enter. And as the minor lines have an edge of 10, I know that this point is located two squares from this side and also two squares from the other side. So I can click just here. And then on the other side, the opposite point is three squares from the top and two from the right. The others, I could do exactly the same. And for the circle, I know that the center is five squares from up and left, so it's going to be this point. Now an important advice. Grid mode only works with my maximum zoom, because if I start zooming out, at one point the grid is resized, and the minor line's edges have no longer 10 of length. And also if I type the command line, I can see snapping inside the squares. Another thing, if I don't have any command active, the snap mode it looks that doesn't work. Only when I activate the command to draw things on the workspace. For example, I will click in the circle and now you can see it. Dynamic input. If I activate a drawing command, for example line, I click to insert the first point 
you can see this interface displaying values, in this case the length, along the line. And if I insert the length, the values appear here. Now I click to switch off the dynamic input and that interface doesn't appear anymore. By the way, if I type 500, the values still appear but in the command line. Ortho mode. I'm going to draw a line and you can see how I can move it around without any problem. If I click in the ortho mode icon, I'm able to draw only vertical or horizontal lines. And I can tell you, if you are making a project that almost everything is orthogonal, you can draw faster using this option. Instead, if I use the polar mode, each time that I draw a line, I can see a green tracking vector when my line is orthogonal specifically with the angle 0, 90, 180 or 270. And if I click when the vector is showing, the line will have precisely that angle. Additionally, I can choose the angles I want to track by clicking here and I can click in the option that suits me more. The more I go down in the list, more angles are tracked. Now I'm tracking every 10 degrees, as you see. Object Snap Tracking If I have this feature turned on, every time I hover an object snap point and then drag the mouse vertically or horizontally, I can see this track appearing here. If I click now, the next line will start from the same edge of the end point, or type a length that I want my next point to start in the direction of this track. And as you may suppose, if I switch off the auto snap tracking, probably I will not be able to do this. The next icon is the object snap. With this activated and if I click in this arrow, I can see which modes are currently on and they indicate what kind of points I can snap on the screen. But be aware, if I turn on all the modes, I have more chances to have a mess when I'm drawing, because some of them can overlap each other. So it's important that I only turn on the ones I need. For example, at this moment with the command line, I can start a new one precisely from the end point of this line or from the midpoint of the bottom line of this door. You can explore all the modes that are in this list. If I have object snap off, I lost all these precision, precision techniques. There is no end point or midpoints now. But sometimes, for some cases, it's useful to have the O snap off. Show line weights. I have this line selected here and then I go to the property section and change the line weight, which is this icon here, to for example one millimeter. Apparently nothing happened because these line weights are by default hidden from the screen. But if I click in the icon show line weights, I'm able to see them. But even this button is switched off, line weights will appear if you print. Selection Cycling I am going to draw a line here over this another one made before. And if I click in the place where I have both lines overlapped, this box opens and allows me to choose which line I want to select. If I click in this one, it selects the long line, but if I click in the first, it's the line I just created. So basically, if I have the selection cycling switched off, sometimes it can be a bit difficult to select the object that I want, especially if there are two or three overlapped. 
show annotation objects. Usually the annotation objects are inserted in the drawing with my workspace in a specific scale. For example, this dimension line has an annotative scale of 1 per 10 and that one was drawn with the scale 1 per 50. So, if I have the icon show annotation objects switched on, all my annotation objects are visible. Then I change the scale to 110, which is the scale of these two dimension lines. And if I switch off this icon, the line that have different scale disappeared. But if I change the scale now to 150, I can see only the other dimension line. OK, the status bar icon that is located just on the right says add scales to annotative objects when the annotation scale changes. I'm going to click in the icon and then I'm going to change my current scale to 1 per 2 and this scale was added to all my annotative objects. If I go to this one and you can see the annotative symbol now appears in double because I have more than one scale in this object. If I click in the object and zoom in, you can see the different scales appearing. And if I go to the quick properties, click in annotative scale and then in this rectangle, I can see the scales that this object has. I can delete some of them or add more if I want. Isolate objects. If I click in this icon, I can see that with this feature I can hide or isolate objects. I'm going to click in isolate and then I select this door, press enter and all the other things disappeared. If I click in hide objects, I do the opposite. It hides the object that I select. Finally, I can simply click again and end object isolation. So, I have just explained most of the icons at the status bar. The others will be for another occasion. But, by the way, if you click in these three bars here, you can find more icons there. For example, the quick properties, as you see here or units, or 3D object snap, all this. So, it was everything in this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Cut in Black to watch the full content of AutoCAD tutorials. Also, if you need extra help, I can provide to you online private lessons for beginners. Just send me an email and I can give you all the details. Thank you and see you next time!